My ninth day in Belarus and the gym is really clearing out. We have five trucks delivering and are hoping to get the last local deliveries complete in the next few days. In fact, my team will deliver to 28 families today. Walter and I are teamed up with our interpreter Lena and driver Valeri along with three girls from social services, Luba, Lena and Natasha. Their job is to find the recipients' homes and get the required signatures. Valeri is the full-time driver of the government-issue social services van, another example of the great contrasts you find in Belarus. This almost brand new van is decked out with seating for six up front and a large storage compartment in the rear. Apparently Valeri spends a lot of time waiting in the van, as it not only has a fold-away DVD system, but it also has an antenna and is able to pick up television stations. While waiting for Luba, Valeri is watching what appears to be a Russian soap opera, parked in a remote village in front of a government office with no running water and a four-hole outhouse. Our travels today take us to very rural locations on poor and washed out roads. We spend a lot of time looking for specific houses. The system for road names and house numbers seems to be very inconsistent and almost incomprehensible. It seems to take a lot of questions and discussion to get agreement on where to look next. I think most people are more curious about why we are there than they are concerned with helping us find our way. When we do find people, they are extremely appreciative of the boxes we bring. They all find it pretty unbelievable that we have come all the way from Canada to bring them a box of food. If a village is big enough, it will have a small water tower fed from a series of wells. There will be taps placed around the village and people will bring their water containers to fill them. In smaller hamlets, they have communal wells like this one, where the water is retrieved manually by the bucketful. For one of our deliveries, we met the woman at a small state-run country store. I was fascinated by the modern bread truck and the driver with his homemade ladder and old wooden flats to deliver his unwrapped bread. The store was like stepping back a hundred years. As I said earlier, we made 28 deliveries that day, but there are several that stand out in my mind. The first was a delivery to this very young family living in a brand new house on a state-run collective farm. This young couple has four children and were really struggling to make ends meet. This is the one pothole we found that someone actually marked. It was a warm rainy day and yet all of these people were out ice fishing and the water was open about 10 feet from shore.
When we started out on this next delivery, we had no idea how far or how wet it was going to be. We had already made a delivery that was about a half a kilometer from the van. The girls said the next delivery was five more houses down the road, based on the numbers. It turned out to be about another kilometer through a lot of mud and water. Twice we had to stop and build log bridges over large ponds. The girls were hauling wood out of the brush and we were placing it across the water. This woman was very happy to see us. Partway back I took this shot where you can see how far we are from the van. The house is about as far as you can see at the end of this road. At this house, number 13, we found these two older women living in a house with so much water around it that the door was almost inaccessible. They wanted us to leave the box by this shed and they would take the contents in small loads over many trips. Walter wouldn't hear of it and was determined to make this delivery. Walter is a Rotarian, and today he lived the motto, Service Above Self. The girls said we made extreme deliveries and called us heroes. I'm not sure if they were impressed or just thought we were a little crazy. In the end, we were wet, muddy and tired, but in all honesty, I don't know if I have ever felt better. <laughs>